Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, this is going to be the follow-up video to the AlphaCool water block installation on the uh, MSI RTX 5070 Ti. Uh, this is going to be is uh, the performance data of uh, what are the benchmarks like after you install it. So this was directly from the GPU Productivity Showdown. I've got two videos out on my channel already. Uh, series 1 is basically all the benchmarks that you've come to know and love from other content creators. And I wanted to make sure I didn't avoid those synthetic benchmarks and productivity benchmarks. So all of that is there for you to see. And I wanted to make sure that I had the data for my systems that I used just so that you can compare in from, from other, um, from, from other creators that are, that are out there. The second, uh, video is what I'm particularly proud of is because it's my own spin on productivity. So I use DaVinci Resolve and I'm more interested in my level of productivity of what is real world results. Um, what's your render time and what can you expect between all of those cards? Uh, that, that video is out there. And then in the middle of all of this testing, this water block showed up. So I just have to put that out there. Use this at your own risk, right? We're going to be taking apart the card and, you know, altering its, you know, it, the hardware. So we're an enthusiast group. We, we all know that we're going to do it, but do it at your own risk. So when you take this card apart, and I have to say it's a nice design. It's not difficult to get apart. Um, it's sandwiched together between two pieces of plastic, however. You um, have the three fans, and you can see there that there's the fan shroud with plastic, and then on the, the plastic back plate. And those are the screws that go through and it sandwiches the card together, and you're left with that fin design, heat pipe design, and then the card. And gets a little better picture here. You can just see the card is not very big at all. And this is a, a flipped over Alpha Cool product. You take the little shipping spacers off and apply your thermal pads. Paste your GPU, flip the card over, bolt it down. You can see there are only six screws that hold this thing together. That's it. The four main ones on the GPU and then two additional ones for your uh, I.O. panel. That's it. That's all the bigger it is. And that video is already out there. If you want to just walk through how to step by step do it and, and my process along the way, Please feel free to take a look. But now that we know that it's together and it works, hallelujah, didn't break it. Uh, how well does it perform? So let's look at some of the data. <clears throat> so I'm using my office rig for this because ultimately all of this testing is to figure out what my best, you know, my best choice of options are for my own personal rig that we're editing on right now. Uh, there's the i9-14900KS, it's delitted. It's got the Thermal Grizzly a Micro Direct Die Pro V1 on it. Runs nice and cool. Uh, I can say this isn't this is an overkill build. Um, you can see here I had a um, sensor panel installed, but that's it's down on the floor and it doesn't do me any good down there. I can't see it. <laughs> so I pulled it off and ran some cables up to the desk just so that I can be able to, you know, use this thing and use the panel. But you can see that I there have been a lot of videos that I've used this office rig, and I didn't really want to make this a test bench. You know, this is my main personal rig that I'm trying to use for the business and and do all of my processing and everything. But it's because of its unique configuration with a, a larger gig of memory um, everything's water cooled on this thing, uh, down to the SSDs. Um, everything that I can water cool is water cooled. Uh, it was interesting taking the memory heat spreaders off and putting the other ones on for the water block. But nonetheless, I put this in the repertoire and plumbed it. Now you can see, because I've made so many changes, my uh, runs and my wire management and everything, that I need to revisit this. So I'm hopeful that once everything settles out and I can leave my office rig alone, that maybe I can sort of clean this up a little bit. But nonetheless, uh, this is the system that we're going to be using today to look at the performance of this water block. So the synthetic and productivity benchmarks are here. You can see here on the left, here's the scores for just the OEM cooler. And then the scores again 
when you put the water block on and the percent change. Now, it is about one and a half percent increase in performance. Now, a lot of you would say that's probably, that's, you know, standard deviation. It's just run variance. Don't worry about that. It's really not any different. Well, that might be true. And I'm willing to appease you on that and say the water block does not reduce performance. Okay, I think we can all confidently say that. But if you look, it's only negative in Orange Room, Blender Classroom, and the OpenCL. And they're negative like by 0 0.1, 0 0.4. Like that to me is run variance. That's no difference, right? If you've got 2%, 1.7%. It's hard to overlook that. Um, so, but if you don't want to say there's a huge performance increase, that's okay. This is OEM spec. Didn't, there's no overclocking, no nothing. It was just put the card in, run it as it, at run, run it like OEM, and then put this water block on it and run it. So with that, look at your water temps, your air temp and your water temps. A 40, over 40% 40 reduction in temperatures. Now, this I really like, you know, it, but you can see the performance of that OEM cooler. It was running in the 60s and, and these, these tests don't run a long time. Um, if you're going to, you know, have a huge gaming stretch, you're probably going to tax the OEM cooler a little bit. Um, it's, it's not bad. Uh, you look at your memory temps, they dipped into the 70s, high 70s, almost 80 degrees. And when you put the water block on it, I mean, it didn't, I mean, it was just, it crossed 45 degrees, 46 degrees. Like, that's huge. 40, over 40%, almost 38% reduction in your temperatures. That's, I, I couldn't be any happier with that, right? So you get maybe a, maybe a small increase in your performance because it can run so much cooler. It doesn't have to worry about the thermals, right? And then 37 to 40 plus percent reduction in your GPU and memory temperatures. And, you know, the, the metal backplate on this, I think, also helps a lot. You got um, pads on the back and a metal backplate to help dissipate the heat. It's not an active backplate. There's just water on one side, on the die side. But I think that you're also getting a benefit there because remember the backplate on the OEM cooler was plastic and with no pads. Like you just unscrew and it just comes right apart. So what about power consumption? So your previous differences, your percent change in scores, GPU temps, memory temps, they're all listed for you there. I just summarize them with the percent changes and then I looked at the wattage difference. The only reason I put this on a slide by itself is the table is getting big and I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see this data. So you've got the uh, the combined average temperatures and differences at the bottom of the slide and it's kind of a wash like it there's a outlier here in terms of the Geekbench OpenCL. I don't know what happened here. Um, I'm probably going to go back and rerun it, but the problem is I think the outlier is this and I don't want to put the air cooler back on it. And I didn't know that that was way off when I first ran it. Now that the water blocks on it. <laughs> so, you know, it's, and it's not it. I mean, you can say what you, what you will. I, I think it's a, it's about negative. It's about, the same amount of wattage that you can run with this card. And I think this gives you headroom if you wanted to overclock. I think that is one of the takeaways here. But how about productivity? That's that's where I am. Does it make me more productive or not? <laughs> so what about my rendering? So the first run with the OEM cooler and that small quick export file, that was two minutes, 59 seconds. So we're looking at three minutes. And then we put the water block on it, made no change, just plug it back in and rerun the test. And you're approximately 25 seconds quicker. Now, that is that is a big change from the render times. And that the, the water block wasn't the only variable here, unfortunately. Um, I got excited when 
DaVinci Resolve released the full version of Studio of 20 Studio. And I upgraded my main rig. So well, I'll leave the test benches at the 19 and and still with the Puget Bench benchmark score. And <clears throat> the test benches will be okay. I'll just leave them as being consistent. But my main rig I'm updating because I want all those benefits that they're putting into the new software. Great piece of software. But the problem here is with that additional variable, does did they change the support? Is are the encoders more optimized in, in the final release? That that could play a role, or maybe the water block keeps it cool that you that can just actually work that much quicker. But I think we have those two variables at play here, not just one. So in summary, if you've seen my previous uh, videos about installation of the water block with the RTX 3090 with the active backplate, you got four, over 40% reduction in cooling there too. <clears throat> but it was really predictable because you got almost the same amount of cooling with not an active backplate, but a passive backplate, the active water block. Slight performance boost, we can say that that's a wash, but I mean, I'm going to say that there's a slight performance boost. Just grant me that. But the biggest change is your temps. It is a huge improvement over the OEM cooler right? 40% uh, reduction in your temperatures, and you've got more room for overclocking. So with that, is it worth the money? I I don't know that I'm going to really push this card and overclock it. Um, that's not really where I'm focusing. Uh, I might play around with a little bit and see what happens, but day-to-day -day running, I'm just going to leave it where it is. I like the longevity. I like my system to, to run at optimal temperatures. I have a 14th gen that runs cool. All of that data is out there. I now have a 5070 Ti that runs very well. I'm happy with its performance, and it's going to run cool and last a long time, I hope. So with that, there's more information on the way. hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. Stick with me. More to come. God bless.